Hey guys, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, I thought I would bring you along as I make two different treats. The first, we are starting off by making some chocolate chip chocolate conchas. And this is a recipe that I think I found online somewhere. I really don't remember. And I thought I would try to make it using my bread machine. It just makes life so much easier when you can just dump the ingredients and let the machine do almost all the work for you. But if you guys are interested in having me do this without a bread machine and using my like dough hook, please let me know down below in the comments. Really, it's not too much work extra. You just kind of have to work with the yeast and the sugar and the milk and water like separately at first and then you add in the rest of the ingredients and just keep kneading it until you have a nice like stretchy dough. But anyways, again, let me know down below in the comments if that's something you'd like to see me do. Hopefully I can, you know, replicate the conchas and have them look exactly the same, but just doing a little bit more work, you know, up front before we get the dough to go through its first rise. So the dough has obviously risen really well and I'm just taking it out and I'm trying to portion up like the same amount and I think I was trying to create around 20-ish small conchas. This recipe does make like 12 really good size large conchas but I kind of feel like the small ones are perfect to have and then you can have some like protein like it's not just like a full meal it's like a good snack and then you can have something that's maybe a little bit more healthy but I'm just rolling them out first and then what I do is I add some chocolate chips and then I'm also making an extra large concha I've never made one this large for my friend for her 21st birthday so that's why we're doing like an extra big one And then in this little blender, I am making the little streusel topping that is butter, powdered sugar, flour, vanilla, and cocoa powder. So this makes a chocolate topping, but I have tried like freeze dried strawberries in the past and just like a vanilla flavor. And if you wanted, you could add food coloring and mix up like the look of this, but I have this little dough blender blade, I guess, for this blender. And it, it really just makes it perfect for me again making my life easier just dump the ingredients and go and it really comes out to like a play-doh like consistency which is perfect when you need to roll them out or flatten them out to put on the top of the conchas So again here I am measuring out like how much of the streusel I have so that I can divide it evenly amongst all of the other little rolls that I had created. And then once it is divided evenly we're going to roll them into like little balls and flatten them and then place them on the top of each roll which I will be buttering and then I use my little concha stamp to create that signature look. Now I don't really know the purpose of the butter. I know that sometimes some recipes don't have you put butter on top of them. My guess is that since there's butter in the streusel, it might help it adhere a little bit better to the roll when it's baking. But you know, I'm not gonna change up my recipe since pretty much every person I've given these conchas to who have had conchas before, they tell me that they are the best ones they've ever had. So I'm not changing a thing here.
So I'm just preheating my oven. The conchas are prepared. And then once my oven gets heated up enough, they will have had enough of a, you know, second rise. And we're gonna bake them. And they actually get, you know, significantly larger. They get like a nice golden brown. I have found that with smaller conchas, it takes about 13 minutes at 375 in the oven. And for like the larger conchas, it takes like 15 minutes-ish to get that perfect consistency. And these conchas are so good. Whenever I've had them in the past, they were always like really dry, but this recipe, it gives you like a nice doughy consistency in your bread and they freeze well, which you guys will be seeing. I will be freezing them. You freeze them, you take them out, you can let them get to room temperature or you can microwave them at like a very low power setting just to kind of defrost and they are still just as doughy as when they come out of the oven. Honestly, you can't go wrong with these. These are delicious. But we are now moving on now that the conchas are done and I packed some away from my friend for her birthday and others in the freezer. We are moving on to making some carrot cake. And in this video, I'm just going to be making the cake. And in my next video, you'll get to see me decorate it for my brother's birthday. We'll also be making the frosting in that video. But I just wanted to make sure the cakes were made. And when you make this cake, you or cake in general, you can always make it like weeks in advance and then just freeze it. It will make decorating a lot easier. It'll keep the cake very moist because you're trapping in that moisture when you freeze it and like wrap it up in saran wrap. And in some ways it's a time saver. You don't have to spend all day in the kitchen baking a cake, waiting for it to cool, making the frosting, decorating. You can really break this up so that you can not feel so overwhelmed in the kitchen, especially if baking is something that you don't particularly enjoy doing. Now I've made this recipe a number of times on this channel, so I'm not gonna be describing each and everything, but one thing that I do like about this recipe is you really only need to dirty one bowl. Here I'm dirtying a lot just to kind of show all of the ingredients, show all of them measured out, but you essentially add all the dry ingredients in a bowl, which you could add them one at a time as you're measuring them out, and then you add the wet ingredients and mix it in, you add the carrots, the raisins, and then the eggs one at a time, and that's it. So if you don't want to you know, mess up tons of bowls in your measuring, you don't have to. And so it's a lot easier, in my opinion, than maybe some other recipes where you kind of need multiple bowls and then you combine everything else and so on. So like I mentioned, I was making, you know, the carrot cake for my brother for his birthday, but we were also going to have a church event coming up where we were celebrating the priest's like 20th anniversary of his ordination, and it was going to be like a big potluck for our church. So I figured I would make a double batch, which is what I'm doing here. And so I'm going to be making two like nine inch round cakes for my brother's birthday. It's just going to be a two layer cake, and I'm excited to show you how I decorated it. I always try to practice like a new technique whenever I 
do a cake. So that will be exciting in the next video. But then I'm also doing some regular size cupcakes. And then with the very last bit of batter, I was like, well, let's just do some mini cupcakes so that I can have those at my house. But the regular size cupcakes, I planned on bringing to the ordination party and the people who I saw try them because it was a potluck. You didn't need to bring enough for like all 200 people. But everyone who tried them that I saw, they all seemed to enjoy it. So that really warmed my heart. I'm glad that my mom's like family recipe was enjoyable to more people than just us who have, you know, had it kind of our whole life. But anyways, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed so you get to see how I make the frosting and how I decorate the cake for my brother. I'll catch you guys in the next one. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday, you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness, and I will catch you in the next one.